And okay, excellent. Quick rolls again. And I'm just gonna delay for a second. Okay, Ben, I will stop you the text. Yep, I got it. All right, we are going to start the meeting, but first I would like to announce our housekeeping rules. Before the meeting's suggestions. Oh, this is, I shouldn't have read that part. Number one, we encourage you to check the internet connection, cameras, microphones, charging devices, and adjust your devices proportionally compared to your body height so that your face and your upper body can be seen clearly. Number two, please keep in mind that we are all professionals, but supportive in, in a supportive environment of Toastmasters International. We want, we want to present ourselves the best way we can, so be punctual, which is definitely appreciated. All right, during the meeting, Please mute or turn off your microphone unless you are speaking. Let's minimize distractions and appreciate people who are speaking. In the event of emergency, the host can mute the principals. Please turn on your camera when you can. We want to see your smiles and whatever's in your glass. Let's, uh, let's see. and you're welcome to show gestures such as thumbs up, nodding, clapping, etc. Number three, try to look at your camera when you are delivering a speech. Remember to look for the timer and pay attention to the time. During the meeting, call out the name of a person you are referring to before you start talking. If you want to see everyone, switch to gallery view. And if you want to see the speaker, switch to speaker view. Then, now let's welcome our president, distinguished Toastmaster, Natalie Chayat. Yay! Thank you, Acting SAA, our VPE, Benjamin Whitaker. And thank you everyone for coming to Vinica Online Toastmasters Club. It's been, this club has been established since December 1st, 2020. So it's still a new kid on the block in terms of like Toastmaster uh, clubs. But we're quite happy uh, to share with you that even though we just finished one term of renewal, uh, 13 member renewed with us to the next term. So we're still here. We're gonna get stronger as we go. And the most important thing is in Vineka, we always have fun in public speaking. So welcome to our club. We hope you will enjoy our club meeting. And especially I would like to say hi to all of the visiting Toastmasters and also guests to Toastmaster Jai and Toastmaster Sharm from TNC uh, Advance and also KL Advance. Toastmaster Agustinus Vijaya from TNC Advance in Jakarta Bahasa, Toastmaster Aaron Bryan from Misompuru Toastmaster Club, as well as Toastmaster Bonaventure Philip or Bonnie from Misompuru as well. And let me see, and the rest is our club members. So welcome, welcome all the club members as well. Uh, to remind you that in Toastmasters, we uphold four main value. We abbreviate it as RISE, respect, integrity, service, and excellence. And the in Bineka Online Toastmasters Club, we also have our own club values, as simple as A, B, C. A is appreciate our club members. B is build each other's up. And C is celebrate our successes. And we try to really implement this in the way we interact with each other, the way we conduct our meeting, as well as outside of Toastmasters meeting. And that's it. Uh, oh, because we have guest Bobby, thank you, Bobby, for visiting our club, a returning Toastmasters. Uh, he has been a Toastmaster member before, so I don't really want to talk about Toastmasters anymore, but we hope that you enjoy this club meeting, and hopefully when you want to come back to Toastmastering, I, you know, you can come and join us in Beneka Online, because let me tell you, by nature, we are a club of 30 plus, which means that our average age is 30 plus. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and in our club, we try to make public speaking fun uh, and enjoyable because just like our founder, Ralph C. Smedley said, we learn best in the moment of enjoyment. And to do that, I would like to kick off tonight's meeting. We have a great set of speakers and evaluators and role takers prepared and i would like to welcome i would like to ask you to give a warm welcome to our toastmaster of the meeting who will be the mc and the host of tonight's meeting toastmaster fifi amaliawati 
Thank you, Natalie. Good evening, my fellow Toastmaster and honored guests. It's my privilege to welcome all of you to today's meeting of the Bineka Online Toastmaster Club. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our guests who honor us with their presence today. And today meeting, our team is childhood memories with word of the day is innocent. I want to share a little bit about the background here is chocolate sprinkles. Why did I choose it as the Zoom background? That's because it reminds me of my childhood when my mother always preserved me this bread when in the morning I wanted to go to school. She provides this bread with chocolate sprinkles and locally we call messes. And also she asked me to bring this donut also with chocolate sprinkles. So I ate this during lunch time at school. Okay, that's the background of my Zoom. And back to the topic, ladies and gentlemen, there are three main parts of our Toastmaster Club meeting. First is the prepared speech session. We have members who will be delivering speeches based on the pathway selected by them. Second is the table topic session where members can practice their thinking and speaking spontaneously on their fit skills. Table topic speakers have to present their speech in one until two minutes. Guests are welcome to join. Part three is our general operator. We'll preside over the evolution session in two until three minutes. Now, I would like to present the introduction of role takers. I will call upon the persons to explain their meeting roles. First, I will call upon General Evaluator Toastmaster Lutfi Atwat Ahmad Jasuli. A bit introduction of Toastmaster Lutfi. Besides a member, he's also the exco. He holds the treasurer of Vineka Online Toastmaster Club. Okay, Toastmaster Lutfi, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Toastmaster of the day. Uh, my name is Lufti. I will acting as your general operator today, but I will not do my job by myself because I have a great team with me. I have uh, a counter, and then grammarian and timer, also belt counter, and also three wonderful evaluators. Uh, to kick off this uh, meeting, I would like to ask my counter, Marin Radika, to share about his role. Okay, I would like to ask host to make me able to share my screen. Can I? Yes, you are. Okay, I'm trying now to share my screen. It is. So, have you seen my screen? Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, as a counter, basically I would like to count your lexical errors or non-lexical errors. Lexical errors for the example. So if I would like to tell you about something, so you put so in the wrong place, or you stop your, your sentence by suddenly, and as I told you, but actually it's at, at the beginning of, sen of the sentence or paragraph, or the non-lexical ones. As I already mentioned, and count actually our madam president already met three times ah uh, during before i say something just now so actually this is the example of i would like to report lexical and non-lexicals so that's why i'm using two laptops once to do this excel and one to watch this meeting all from the start until the end so i would like to give the control sorry i would like to give the reports when my boss ge Lufti call me at the right time. I give the control back to my GEG. -E. Time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Rendra. The next role of today is Kerb Marian. I would like to call DTM Pipit to share about her duty today. DTM Pipit, Hello. time is yours. Oh. Hello, everyone. Sorry for being mobile today, but I'm trying my best to fulfill this role. So I'm your grammarian today. I'm all ears for all of your language use whether it needs some improvement or whether it deserves a special mention, honorable mention. So I will read for it later. Now, before we go on, I would like to introduce the word of the day. The word of the day is innocent. Innocent means free from moral wrong, harmless, 
and not guilty, basically. How to use it in a sentence, for example, I wish I could sleep soundly like an innocent child. So have fun using the word of the day, innocent, in today's meeting. Now back to GE. Okay, thank you, Dijan Pipit. Now the next role is the timer, and our timer is Seni. Seni, could you please share your role today with us? Yes, thank you, Mr. GE. Hello, everybody. My name is Seni. Today, I will be the officer of the traffic lights. It's okay for all the, the all of the speakers. Please pay attention to me to my screen. I mean. <laughs> So when I launch the green, you can continue speaking. Yellow, you have to be careful. And red, you have to conclude your speech immediately. So today we will have three sessions. First session, prepare speeches. We have one speaker with time five to seven minutes. We have two speakers that will have speaking time in 20 minutes. Uh, hold on. Sorry, 12 minutes. Okay, so for these two speakers, 10 is the green, 11 is yellow, and 12 is red. Okay, that's all for me. I will just be in your time officer. Once again, please pin my screen. Thank you, and back to Mr. GE. Okay, thank you very much, Sunny. Now the next role is ballot counter, but ballot counter is also by pipette, right? Pipit, could you share yeah. the role with you, with us, sorry, for ballot yes. counter? Yes, fortunately, by the time I need to launch the poll and then report the winners, I will be at home. So I will okay. be the one who will launch the poll for you to choose who is the best prepared speakers, who is the best table topic speaker, and who is the best uh, evaluator. So stay tuned. All right. Thank you very much, Dita and Pipit. Okay, that is my role play, our role takers today. We have our counter, grammarian, timer, and ballot counter. And I also have three wonderful uh, evaluators. We have uh, Ben as the first evaluator, and then BTM Augustinus Wijaya as the second evaluator. And the third evaluator is Jai Narayan, from, also from TNC Advanced Toastmaster Club. I guess that is my team for today. Hope uh, today's meeting runs well. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, GE, and thank you for all the role takers to present your role for today's meeting. My fellow Toastmaster and guests, as mentioned before, our first session is the prepare speech. We have three speakers who are presenting project pieces from their pathways. Let's call the first speaker. He's Toastmaster Aaron Brian Hubertus. Toastmaster Aaron is a Toastmaster member from Misomporu Toastmaster Club, Malaysia. To present this project, we have Toastmaster Benjamin Whitaker, who spent his childhood in the United States. Ben will evaluate Toastmaster Aaron. I will call Toastmaster Ben to read the speech objective. Oh, ben, really? the stage is yours. Thank you, Madam Tom. Yes, my childhood was definitely spent in the United States. But now my adulthood and more fun is here. Now let me introduce our next speaker. Before I do that, I will discuss his purpose of his speech. He will be, Aaron will be doing an uh, introduction to Toastmaster mentoring. And of course the purpose of this speech is for a member to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. And the purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege. Now don't let Aaron's innocent face for you, even though he is in a currently university student at the University of Sabah in Malaysia. He is getting his degree in music and he says he's shy. And he's trying to do public speaking to improve himself, not just to overcome his fear, but also learn about how to perform in front of an audience and speak, which is great. So let's see if he's not so innocent. So let me welcome Mr. Toastmaster Aaron Brian Hubertus with from a wheat, now I'm a bun, eventually will become a burger. From a wheat, now I'm a bun, eventually will become a burger. Toastmaster 
Aaron Brian Hubertus. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. As I walk to the stage, feeling the change, <clears throat> feeling the change, the chills that went down my spine, I sit still. I can't seem to open my mouth because my heart was pounding so hard that I thought I was going to lose it. I was frozen for a good minute when I was delivering my first ever ice-breaking speech. And it felt like eternity. That was the moment after the Toastmasters evening called my name to present in a cup in front of 30 or even more people in front of our first ever Misompuru online Toastmasters meeting. Few months ago, I may not able to speak just the way I'm speaking right here today. I was introduced by my best friend about Toastmasters, and that was the moment I started from a wheat to a bun, and eventually I believe I become a burger. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Did you heard ever found crazily when you are asked to speak in public? I continue to struggle in public speaking every time I was called in the meetings. What I need is someone who could pass on guidance and support someone you will call a mentor. This makes me think I should grab that chance. And while I'm still young, this is the most effective way to help me to become the better of me in tomorrow or future. My first ever speech, when I was drafting my icebreaker, I had almost no idea what I want to talk about and I can't even think of any titles back then. I would seek guidance regarding the speech draft to my first mentor ever. As you can see, he was here watching me, who is Toastmasters Bonaventure and also the president of my club himself. So he gave me the feedback that I have to maintain which is the word count I, I do for my first speech is around 1,000. But when I asked him to check it, uh, he asked me to keep it short because uh, in Toastmasters, we don't speak the way we speak we, when we're writing essays. When we in Toastmasters, we have our own style doing our speeches. So she gave me ideas, some ideas that I should keep this, uh, the speech short and also maybe put some questions for the audience or even add some quotes in the beginning of the speech. He also gave me a general feedback like writing a speech. Uh, um, maybe I, I shouldn't use like a formal way, but instead speak like I'm talking with a friend, like I'm telling stories with my best friend. So I was a very I was very proud of my first speech because I have never worked so hard in my life. And in about one month later, my next project was doing my very first evaluation and feedback. For, for that one, uh, I really messed that one up really, really bad. That time I evaluate someone's speech, but I can't even really focus about what I want to talk or comment on his speech. But instead, I was hooked up by the speaker's stories. 
in the end, I only managed to comment one word and I only able to give a very simple evaluation and also a very awkward evaluation to the speakers. And when when it was it was so embarrassed embarrassing things in my life, I think in my Toastmaster journey. And that's a part of life. People make mistakes and that's why we have this word exists, which is we call as practice. After my mistake that I made, I keep seeking more guidance, not just from Toastmasters Bonnie, but I was also asking some tips from the other veteran Toastmasters to, so I can make better speeches. As the time passed, my next project I require to do is mostly about my pathway, which is engaging humor. So as we all know, this pathway is one of the most difficult one because it requires to requires the speakers to make the audiences laugh in whatsoever speech that we made. So by far for today, I'm still learning. It's quite challenging for me because I have to brainstorm everything and keep digging some ideas about humorous. And guess what? I have learned that personal story. I have learned from them that personal stories makes everything better. And maybe in Toastmasters, I would say I won't. I won't take Toastmasters as an as uh, exams, but maybe just for me to do storytelling and sharing experience to people. That's all for me. Back to you, Toastmasters of the evening. Thank you, Toastmaster Aaron, for your sharing. I also have struggled when I was not joined the Toastmasters. Okay, let's move on on the second speaker. Here we have the second speaker is Toastmaster Ping Hendra. He's one of the ESCO members in Mineka Online Toastmaster Club. And for his evaluator, I will call upon Toastmaster Agustinus Wijaya DTM from TN's Advanced Toastmaster Club to read. The speech objective, please welcome Toastmaster Agustinus Vijaya. Thank you, Toastmaster Vivi. Good evening, everyone. Today, Toastmaster Ping Hendra will present a level five project from Strategic Relationship Pathway. The project is called Reflect on Your Path. The purpose of this project is for Toastmaster Ping to reflect on his growth during the completion of strategic relationship pathways. In his speech, he is going to share some aspect of his growth. The, the time allocation for his speech is 10 to 12 minutes. The title of his speech is Got to Change to Change. Got to Change to Change. Please help me welcome Toastmaster Ping Hendra. I still remember when I received a notification on my Instagram that there's a new program by DTM Agustinus team. He's the PQD for those of you that didn't know, Program Quality Director. And the challenge is 11, 11, 11, meaning you gotta speak at 11 different club, at 11 different divisions for 11 projects. When I first saw it, I was like, there's no way this is gonna work. It's crazy, huge time commitment. This is insane. 
And I complained to him. I still remember. I sent him a text. I said, dude, that's impossible. And he said, why? I thought you'll be the first person that I can think of that can get this done. Then I said, it's just not possible because you have to meet, go to different clubs and say hello and blah, 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 blah. I said all this stuff. And it's like, dude, don't give up. Trust me, you can do it. When I thought about this project, one of the few people that I can think of it on the top of my mind, your name pops up. And I was like, really? And that motivated me. So from someone who's very skeptical to someone who's driven, okay, let's try it. Let's go. And then, lo and behold, I got an invitation to become the moderator for the TLI event for both rounds, the first Saturday and the next one is on Sunday. And when I get those two rounds, for whatever reason, I guess because people attended the event, I will say most, if not all, the ex coast know who I am. And that's a huge advantage for me because then when I went on to and say hi to their ex coast they're like, oh, oh, so you are the moderator. I remember you. And that got me invited. It's easier for me to get invited to speak at events at their club. I remember I, my very first one was me attending a club that's dual language. So I have to speak Mandarin for half of a speech. And I, it was icebreaker speech. And I shared that actually I went to China back in the days for four years and my Mandarin is still not good, but I make an attempt to deliver it half, half, half in Mandarin and half in English for the first time in a long time. And that's amazing. Then I went to the next one, which is Misompuru Toastmasters Club. And that's where I met Bonaventure. And I learned new words, Kopi Sanangan. I, enjoy it and I learned it until now. I still remember it until I will never forget it. And there's so many other things that I learned. So for those of you that thought that the Triple Crown Award is not achievable, it's impossible, trust me, it's more than, cap you are more than capable to get it done. Trust me on that, okay? I still remember this, when I spoke at an, club and this club is different. Every club is different, right? The dynamics are different. So I learned a lot of different things. I learned that there are some clubs that did the table topics first and then the prepared speakers. And I learned some that are similar to us that did the prepared speaker first and then the evaluation uh, sessions afterward. There are some that immediately after a speech, they get evaluated right then and there. And then second speech evaluation, second, uh, third speech evaluation. I learned so many things, different dynamics. And one more thing that I really learned the most is that there were some clubs out there that were not too receptive of members from, I mean, they're not members basically. There are some people that say, I, so I said, hey, can I deliver a prepared speech at your club? And they said this, okay, we will prioritize our member. If there's an opening, then I will let you know. My dear friends, how does that make you feel when someone said that to you? I know that is, of course, we as a club, we prioritize our members as we should. However, when someone said that to you, if there's a slot for you, we'll let you in. Think, um, think about it. How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel honored? Raise your hands if, does it make you, if that makes you feel honored. <laughs> ben raised his hand. He, makes, he, he said, oh, I'm honored that I'll be the leftover. Or it makes you feel, wow, why am I, why I felt like a left, leftover? Like, what's going on? If that's, that makes you feel like that, raise your hands. Because that's what... That's how I felt. I felt, wow, why is this the case? That's why clubs that immediately said, 
Yes, pink, let's come in. And I, I get all the joy. They were all very friendly. They all spoke to me and they all really nice. But the other clubs that wasn't as receptive of me visiting, there's only one club out of the 14 clubs that I've been that wasn't as nice. And I didn't enjoy my time. That meeting, that one hour and a half felt like four hours. It was such a drag because they don't want me there. And as a result, I don't feel like I'm enjoying myself there. So for those of you that perhaps want to come to a club meeting, but you don't feel like it at that day for whatever reason, my advice, don't show up. Because if you show up, you feel like, wow, I don't feel like it. And at the end of the day, you're not going to enjoy yourself. And learning, it should be enjoyable, as Natalie said earlier. You learn the most, the best, when you really enjoy yourself. And I enjoy, I truly enjoyed my Toastmasters journey from different types of divisions. And for those of you that didn't know, there are 16 projects that you need to complete in order for you to finish a path. So Agus challenge is 11, 11, 11. I took it a step further. So what I did was I did all 16 of my speeches at 16 different clubs across 11 divisions, just for the fun of it. So none of my clubs, none of the clubs were the same. Well, I did 14 and one non-Toastmasters event, and one, the TLI event, which kickstart the whole thing. I delivered a speech in Bahasa Indonesia. I didn't know I have the ability to do that. I delivered it, never knew that I have the capability because I have more than half of my life was spent away from home. All my life I've been living abroad. So my Bahasa Indonesia, it's not good, really terrible, especially if it's formal way of speaking, it's really, really bad. If it's conversational, it's good. If it's non-conversational, oh my goodness, so bad. Yet I delivered it. I said, okay, let's try. Doesn't hurt to try. And I tried, it was fun. So, and I chose the, the path strategic relationships because at the end of the day, you have to be Number one, not only strategic, but focus on the relationships. You are going to have the chance to meet people from different clubs. You're going to ex experience different types of dynamics and you're going to meet a bunch of different types of people. And it was so much fun. So I would like to really thank Agustinus for his idea, even though it was a little bit sinister, I thought in the beginning, but it was fun. I learned a great deal. And I was very glad that I actually took the chance to try it out. For those of you that say to myself, Pink, it's only October and you're, you've done with everything. Are you a nerd? Well, it's because when you ask to deliver a speech at a club, if the person said, hey, we have a speech for you, a slot for you on Wednesday, what would you do? Will you say, oh, no, I can't do it this Wednesday. I can do it three Wednesday from now. How does that make you feel? When someone offered you something and you say, no, I'm not going to take it right now. I'm going to take it three months or, or three weeks later. How does that make you feel? Not good, right? Just like for me, when I offered a slot and they said, no, we'll give it to you. If there's a leftover, it's the same thing. So I don't want to have that same uh, cause them to feel unhappy as well. So I said, okay, let's take it. Okay, let's do it. So this is the first time in my Toastmasters career that I delivered a speech from Monday to Sunday. I have done all. Monday to Sunday, I've done it all. And afternoon speech, I've done it. Evening speech, I've done it. And they are mid afternoon, like four o'clock, which is very weird time. I've done those stuff as well. Maybe you can say pink. That's such a nerd. I'm like, I know, but it's fun. And I said, I'm going to do this for a short burst. 
Once it's done, that's it. I'm going to focus on the normal Toastmasters life where I attended meetings and have fun with everybody here at Bineka. And what I want to tell all of you is that sometimes you have to be flexible. When things don't go your way, make it your way, one way or another. Be flexible. And if they say, Ping, I'm so sorry, uh, for whatever reason, we can't give you the slot on Wednesday, this Wednesday. But what we can do is we can, because I understand you are pursuing the triple crown thingy, what I can do is I'll give you, a, a ask someone from my area and I'll give it to you on Friday, this Friday. What do you think about that? I, I was so happy. I was so appreciative. I said, okay, let's do that. So I, I changed my schedule like crazy to fit in their schedule. Sometimes as a business person, when you are venturing abroad, it's the same thing. If you have a client that comes to you and say, hey, I can't make it Wednesday. I can only do it tomorrow at 3 p.m. If you really want it enough, you will say, okay, I'll make time for three o'clock to your office, which is pretty much the same thing in my opinion. And I learned this and I can apply this for my life as well. So with that, I want to thank everybody for listening to me reflecting on my path of pursuing this crazy 11, 11, 11 challenge. And if I can do it, all of you can do it too. With that, I thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Toastmaster Pinghendra, for sharing your feeling and experience when you join many Toastmasters meeting. It's valuable reference to all of us. My fellow Toastmaster and distinguished guests, Let's us continue with the third speaker, which is also the last speaker, DTM Natalie Cahyadi. She will be evaluated by Toastmaster Jay Narayan. Little bit about Natalie Cahyadi. She was born in Bali, spent her childhood in Bali, and until now she lives in Bali. <laughs> for, for Natalie project, she will present similar like um, Toastmaster Spring. It's about uh, reflect on your path with speed title, take the stairs. The time allocation is 10 until 12 minutes. Please welcome the next speaker. Hello Toastmaster ladies and gentlemen. What would you do when you are faced with a choice to take the stairs or to take the elevator? Will you take the stairs? If yes, type one in the chat. If you are like me, you want to take the elevator, take two, uh, type two. Yes, I know guys. Yeah, we want everything to be simple and quick. Normally in, yes, thank you everyone for the response. Normally in our life, we will choose to take elevator because it's quicker, it's less hassle. And we just want to, uh, arrive at our destination very quickly with a minimum effort. But let me tell you, in the past one and a half years of me starting the presentation mastery part, I learned that taking elevator is not the best way to, to grow. But when you decided to take the stairs, then you will really feel and you will truly immerse in your growth. Now, for the benefit of all the audience visiting Toastmasters here, I'm going to share my reflection of my pot in slightly different way. Instead of focusing on the laundry list of this project and that project, I'm just going to share what I've learned in and outside of Toastmasters in the past one and a half years that motivate me to pursue public speaking and also training and coaching as my future career. So let's start where it all began. It all began in July, 2020, a month after I finished my DTM from the traditional or the legacy path. I was in a conundrum. What should I do now? I felt like I still need to learn things, but I'm not sure. So after I had this 
thought. I immediately contacted some of my mentees, including Ben, who's here right now. And we had a quick, well, not quick, one half hours. It turned out to be one half hours Zoom discussion. And I shared to them, guys, I really need your feedback. I think public speaking is something that I wanted to pursue as my future career. But can you let me know what you think about me as your mentor so far? Some of them I've mentored for three years. Ben, I've mentored for one and a half years. Some of them I mentored for six months. So those are the people that I've mentored in different phases um, of their life. And it felt like a, a, an icebreaker for me because I was trying to present to them what I wanted to do and a part of me. And the purpose of that meeting is for me to identify my strength as a public speaker or as a mentor and what I can do to move forward. It was one meeting, but it was very fruitful. I got clarity of where I wanna go. And I also know that I need to prepare myself to take the stairs, to build up from like nothing into something. So after the meeting, I immediately put my plan into action. It was a series of first time. I immediately contacted some of my friends in and outside of Toastmasters, and I got my first gig speaking in one of my friend's new venture uh, in her IG life. My friend Kenny was an ex Toastmasters, and she just at that time she just uh, launched her online platform education. So it was a new venture for Kenny, but it was a new adventure for Natalie. We matched very well. I remember the first gig that I had, I prepared so much for just one hour Instagram live. It was like one month preparation, multiple meetings, rehearsing, discussing questions, and also preparing things as in technical difficulties or anticipating different stuff. But I re remember what I felt after I finished my first gig. I felt so relieved. Not just the ice has been broken, but I felt like my self-doubt has been melted down. I could do this too. And from that first gig, it led into the next one, this other smaller gigs, like speaking in local radio and also in my church, Instagram Live. And it started to go up and bigger. When I first take my first step in the stair case, it felt like it led nowhere, but it actually led somewhere. Just like when you're walking from your ground floor to the first floor in your house or in your office. And after that, there is another uh, big event for me on September last year. It was Division G, District 87 Toastmasters Club evaluation workshop. So it was my first uh, workshop that I did in Toastmasters online, attended by 30 people, helped by five facilitators, which I'm so grateful of, and organized by Capable Toastmasters. It was my first workshop. What I learned from that experience is the first uh, smaller gigs, my motivation is just to try out and I came with enthusiasm. Now, in my first workshop, I came with not only enthusiasm, but also exploration mindset. Because I think, okay, I enjoy evaluation so far. Why not? Why not share what I know with people so they can also get some benefit and some value out of it? And thank God the response was great even though some of them said that they have been brain, brain fried <laughs> for the 40 minute session because so many different stuff happening, like information overload. But generally they said it's beneficial. So I'm very thankful for that. And through the experience of giving workshop, I also realized, oh, there are so many different types of presentation. It's not just speaking or lecturing, but also it is, facilitating, it is uh, engaging the audience, 
it's also trying to uh, in, interact with the audience, have them do some exercise. So I learn new things as I go through. Then after that, I got my first paid gigs doing a workshop in government institution. And the funny thing is I got this gig because a friend and Toastmaster recommended me to the institution. So I went in 2019 to Balikpapan, Kalimantan to establish a Toastmasters club with my good friend Pipit. And the next year, I got an invitation to do the workshop in that particular institution for their administration staff and their uh, lectures, lecturers. I was so nervous, like to be very honest, because I, I, before that, I always tell myself, I'm not a trainer. I didn't have experience. I didn't have enough this, enough that, enough this, and enough that. But when the opportunity is already right in front of your face, you just have to react and say, yes, I'm going to take it and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. So that's what I did. I said, yes, I can do that. I prepared my slide, prepared my training materials. It may not be the best by any uh, you know, by any measure, because I also was still new in the business, but at least I know that I've tried my best. And one thing that I also learned from my friend Ping here is he said that just remember to give value to your audience. So that's what one advice that I remember when I did my workshop, just give value to my audience, whatever it is, try to give value. And I learned from this experience that actually, there's no better way to learn and to grow except by doing it. That's the only way. When you do it, the more you do it, the better you become at it. And the better you become at it, the more second nature um, it, it becomes to you. So in all of this process, taking the stairs was basically me hustling and keeping up the mindset of, I just need to make the next step. I just need to take the next step to move forward, to move forward, no matter how small it is. And one thing lead to another, one step, two steps, three steps lead to higher and greater heights, which sometimes I never thought of before. And all in all, one thing leads to another. And I finally got my first uh, overseas speaking opportunity, speaking in a Toastmaster club in Korea and also a Toastmaster club in USA. And from another organization, I had an opportunity to share um, in Indian University, CVM University. For the very first time, I did like a lecture about storytelling in business. And this will not be happening if it's not because of the online. So People can say there are two sides of the coin. Either you see it, it gives you, uh, either you see it as opportunity or either you see it as obstacles. So online has been a great opportunity for me to further my uh, progress in public speaking and also to uh, reach wider audience and really utilizing opportunities that come my way. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing this not to brag mostly, but I, I just wanted to share that what came in as a discussion among friends can lead to a potential new career path for me. Only when you keep taking the stairs, when you keep walking forward, when you take that one step, one step forward, one step forward, you will be surprised at different results that can happen. It may be the same scenario, but it's a different scenery. So I would encourage you to take the stairs and not elevator because there is no elevator of growth and success. There's only a stair of growth and success.
Back to you, Fifi. Wow, thank you, Ned. We take note on your sharing that taking the elevator is not the best way to grow. And your speech is interesting, motivates everyone here for public speaking, training, and coaching. My fellow Toastmaster and distinguished guests, before we move to the next session, can Timer inform us whether all the speakers are eligible to be quoted? Yes, Madam Tom, a report from the timer. All of the speakers are eligible to be voted at a separate one. Thank you very much. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Sandy. My fellow Toastmaster and this guest, may I have your attention? We will have group photo session. Please turn on your camera and you show your smiling face. DTM Pipit. Will you help to capture this good moment? Uh, I can. Uh, yes, I think Natalie can help me for this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can do that. Uh, okay, everyone, you can open your camera. Dian, are you there? Dian, nudge me. Do you want to open your camera? Jai, yeah. are you there? Jai? Oh, Jai is off there. Okay, great. All right, guys. Best pose. Smile in three, two, one. Okay, and a second pose is your childhood in memories pose. So whatever it is, childhood memories. You can be cute, you can be innocent, you can be whatever you want. In three, two, one. Awesome, awesome. Back to you, Fee. Thank you, Nev, for capturing the good moment. My fellow Toastmaster and this thing is guest, this is the moment that we all are waiting for. This is the table topic session. To provide us with the challenge for to uh, today's table topic session, we have table topic master. And this person is a member of Vineka Toastmaster Club, Toastmaster Dian Marifianti. We call it Dian Fifi, who will lead this session. Please welcome Toastmaster Dian Fifi. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Fifi. Okay, good evening, fellow Toastmaster and guests. Welcome to Vinica Online Toastmaster. Uh, my name is Dian, and I am your table topic master this evening. So what is table topic? Table topic is a session to train the member or guest to express quickly their thoughts. And all the guests may participate in this session. Each speaker is required to speak one to two minutes. Participants uh, are disqualified at two minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our question is based on the our topic today. And our topic today is childhood memories. And as a as speaker, you may use today's word is innocence. Use as many as you can. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, childhood memories. It is interesting topic. In my mind, my childhood memories is a rich and varied because it's related to playing, holidays, visiting my grandma and grandpa, and also caring and loving family. May I share screen? Yes, you may, and you should be able to. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Okay. okay, and this is my 
because it's related to happiness, loving and caring family. And today I have 12 cards. Okay. And you may as volunteer pick one card as your question. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Now who wants to be volunteers for the first time? Okay. May I Saiful from Malaysia online? Yes. If you want to be volunteer, you may chat, you may write in a chat box. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm volunteering. I'm Saiful from Malaysia okay. Online. Okay. Okay. Okay, those <laughs> master Saiful, you may pick one card. What number do you want? Can I have number six? Okay, number six. Okay, number six. Here is the question. Okay. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grow up? When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grow up? Two, two, two minutes. Thank you, Tabletop. Thank you, Tabletop Master. I was born in the very poor family. I'm not some rich guy who have cars. Even my father only have a motorbike, a cup chai, small CC, and all of us will hop in onto the bike. There's four of us in the family. I have two brother, uh, I have two siblings. So with my mother and it seems like a circus, but the thing is right now, that's very fun for us. Able to ride on the bike, to go to the market, to go to buy anything. And in my mind at that time, I want to drive a car. I really want to drive a car. I want to own a car so I can bring my father, my mother to anywhere they want to go. Because as innocent as it be, I always thought car is for rich people. It's beyond my reach. It's beyond my imagination. I was not at the same league as they are. And those are my dream. However, I would say like this, through hard work, studies and everything, now I own three cars. Then I realized something. Anybody can own a car. Any cabbie can have a, have a car if they don't want to. It's regardless whether you want to buy a, an expensive car, a big car. Yes, I have an MTV, a big one. I have a saloon, quite a good one also. And I have a mini car. And it also can able, uh, able to do that. As innocent as this, my childhood is simple. And of course, without the help of my father and my mother and the guidance from them, it is hard for me to pass the way in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, your dream is for you to achieve if you really want it. Back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you very much for your sharing. Yes, that's a good dream for your parents, yeah? To serve them and to make them happy. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Saiful. And now for the second volunteers. Uh, wait, 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 boys again. Okay, for the second volunteers, who wants to be volunteers? Okay. Master, I, I wrote it in the chat box. Toastmaster Bonaventure from Misampur. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Natalie. Okay, Toastmaster bon, uh, Bonaventure. Yeah, okay. What numbers do you want to? What uh, number? Give me number seven, please. Number seven. Okay. Number six already. Now number seven. Okay. Number seven. This is the question. <laughs> who pampered? Who pampered you the most when you were a little kid? Who pampered you the most? when you were a little kid one to two minutes uh, 
I had two people in my life that had been pampering me all throughout my life. One. The first one is my beloved wife. She pampers me a lot. I can go anywhere I want and everything would be served on the table. My food would be prepared. My dress or my shirts would all be ironed and I am in piffy and topsy condition whenever I leave my house for a meeting or for any occasion. But during my innocent time, during the times when I was small, there's only one person who had always been doing that to me. Pampering me when I get up or even when I sleep or even during the times when I take my bath. And that would be my mother. She's no longer here with me or with us now, but she pampers me when I go to the bathroom. She would prepare my clothes. And when I go to the bedroom, she would pamper with me with a good blanket. I had nothing to worry about because she would always take my side in any arguments that come in the family. She would be siding me because it looks like the innocent me is her favorite. And now I know why, because I'm the first one in the family. With that, back to you, Table Topic Master. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster Abona Ventura, for your sharing. Now, next to the third question, I would like to invite, um, I would like to invite, okay, Sham from KL Advance. Okay, Sham for KL Advance. Okay. Yeah, I will take number eight. Number eight. Okay, number eight. Okay, number eight. Okay, first master song. You got a time machine and you are traveling back to your childhood. What you would say? You got a time machine and you are traveling back to your childhood. What would you like to say? Two, one, two, two minutes. I'm going back to my childhood and what would I like to say? Well, when I was about four years old, we went for a function in Malaysia and this is a very big function. It was like a religious function with a lot of, I mean, thousands of people attending it. In this famous place, some of you who have been to Malaysia will know it, it's called Batu Caves. And it's like 272 steps, it's in KL. And uh, there is this function every year, which is called Thai Pusam, and uh, lots and lots of people do. And I was four years old, and this was my first experience going to Batu Caves. There were lots of people, there was lots of music, there was lots of chanting, and there were these people who were pierced uh, with needles and carrying lots of religious artifacts. And it was also exciting for me as a four-year-old. And I just couldn't believe that I was in such an environment. And then after a while, it was a really, really hot day. We stopped by to take a drink, a cold sugarcane water juice, right? So we stopped there and I was busily drinking and looking on the side of the car park and my family was looking on my left. And suddenly when I finished drinking and I turned to the left to look at my family, <gasps> there was no family. <laughs> yes, can you imagine a four-year-old kid who is so shocked that she's lost a family? So what did I do? You know, the most sensible thing to do, I started bawling like mad. I was crying and screaming and shouting. No, actually, I, didn't. I was just sobbing a lot, sobbing very loudly. And someone came and they took me to the lost and found counter. Apparently, lots of kids, this happens to a lot of kids in these crowds, yeah? And I was still, they kept asking me my name and I was like, you know, very smart kid at that time. I just didn't answer. I just continued crying even louder. I, okay, I wasn't that smart at this age. 
And um, after a while, my dad came to collect me. And I can still remember the relief I felt. And I would say, thank God that happened. But what I would have had to change is, you know, not get lost in the first place. And like, you know, just stuck onto my, my mom's sari or whatever it is. Yes, that's what would I, I would have had a little bit different. It was very traumatic. Back to you, Madam Topics Master. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster Sharm. Yes, everything is different when we were childhood. Yeah, because everything is fun. Not, uh, we didn't think about the bill, payment, school fee. Yeah, <laughs> then I want to take it back to my childhood also. Next to the fourth question. Okay. I would like to invite, um, okay. I would like to invite names. Dian Najmi. Dian Najmi, are you available? We have Bobby that volunteering himself. Okay, okay. Aaron, Aaron, yeah. Aaron from Mi Sampuru, yeah. Okay, Aaron. What number do you want, Aaron, for your question? Can can I take number two? Number two. Okay. Number two. Oh, sorry. For number two, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Number two. Yes. Wait. Number two. Okay. The question is. Next, can you remember your earliest childhood memory of happiness and of fear? Can you remember your earliest childhood memory of happiness and of fear? One, two, two minutes. Okay. Can I remember my childhood memories of happiness and fear? Yeah. Okay, so what I can remember the most when I was still an innocent kid, for my most ha happiest moment in my childhood is maybe I was given ice cream. I, when, when, I was, okay, when I was a kid, my mom, she hates that. She, she really hates that I, when I, I want to eat maybe candy or sugar, something sweet. She never let me eating any sweet things, uh, sweet stuff. Even cola, even, even I want to drink cola, she will let me drink maybe just a sip of it. So. What I remember is me and my grandma. I always, I always hang out in my grandma's place, where I will call my grandma's place is a heaven for me. Back then I was a kid, so whenever I I went there, she will give me a lot of food, and maybe. That was the first time I was given an ice cream. She said like this, never tell your mom. If not, she, she going to scold me and you're going to be in trouble as well. And also, I, I think that was also my biggest fear during my childhood because I never tell my mom until now that my uh, my grandma teach me to eat ice cream uh, that's why ice cream is now my most favorite food amongst all the sweet things that's all from me back to you Tosma, table topic masters thank you very much Toastmaster aaron yes every child are not allowed to eat sweets also now with my son yeah, uh, I'm not allow him to eat sweet. Yeah, 
And however, uh, before sleeping, I also I always brush his teeth. Yeah. When I were a kid, my mom also didn't. Um, she's not. Uh, she was not allow me to eat sweet, on um, including ice cream. It's the same. Now the last question is. I would like to invite. Okay, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Are you available, Bobby? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What number do you want? Mm. Mm. A bit nervous. <laughs> no. Okay. It still has me start. Twelve lah. Twelve. Okay. Yep. 12. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Twelve. Okay. Hello. Listen carefully. Describe several of your childhood characters. And are you still that way today? Describe several of your childhood characters. And are you still that way today? One to two minutes. Innocent as I was during my childhood, I was always happy and playful. Here and there, I always uh, playing with kids in my neighborhoods. Um, yes, at, as uh, everybody says, the world is full of a colorful flowers and rainbows during childhood. As uh, and Dian mentioned that we don't think about the bills, etc. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, if that was my child, with uh, would I change? Definitely, yes. Along the way, there are a lot of things, a lot of uh, stones, a lot of challenging, but. I choose not on certain areas. And one of it is my playful and my happiness. <laughs> so I keep happy and keep playful. Why? Because no matter what challenge, if I can maintain a playful weather here inside of my thought, I will be able to face any storm outside that happened in the world there. So, my fellow Toastmasters, it's just a matter of choices whether the environment will change totally of you or you will choose only selected positive characters that you will maintain to strive in difficult situations. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you very much for your sharing. Yes, innocence. Every child has a innocent character. As a, in every child has innocent character. Okay. Next, uh, do we have a time for uh, next question? No, uh, we can conclude. Okay. Five speakers. Thank okay. you, Dr. Sadian. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Natalie. And I would like to ask our timer: Was all the speakers eligible? Our timer. Hello, Topi Master. I'm here, and I just share the report, my time report. Yeah. The topic speaker one until five. All of the the speakers are eligible to be voted as the favorite one. Congratulations. And oh. back to Madam Table Topic Master. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster Sani. Okay, that's all for me as the Table Topic Master. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your sharing. I can conclude that childhood memory is important because it makes us remember the best part of our life. Back to the Toastmaster TV. 
Wow, thank you Toastmaster Dian VP. Two thumbs up for you for leading this section. So interesting. Nice to hear everyone sharing about the childhood memory and we could imagine we were innocent at that time. Okay, now let's continue. Someone says that feedback makes us grow. In Toastmaster, we learn to receive constructive feedback to be better speaker. We now come to part three of the meeting, the evaluation session. I would like to invite our general evaluator for today's meeting, Toastmaster Lutfi Ahmad Jasuli, to call upon its evaluator to present the evaluation speech. Over to you, Toastmaster Lutfi. Thank you, Toastmaster of the meeting. Today, I will start the evaluation, as is the heart of uh, Toastmaster. As the first evaluator will be Toastmaster Ben, we'll evaluating Aaron Bryan. Ben, time and place is yours. Thank you, Mr. GE. And thank you, Toastmaster Aaron, for presenting your speech today with us. And for this particular speech, I believe is one of the most influential for us as Toastmasters, because mentors are, in fact, in my opinion, the backbone of Toastmasters. They're the ones that kind of keep us going and keep us motivated. And without them, we probably wouldn't have a club for almost 100 years. And you started off your speech with that personal story about getting your icebreaker, and kind of how nervous you were, like a little piece of wheat, so to speak. And again, one of the most humbling moments, I think, for a mentor is when a, a protege uses some of the tools they provided. And the cool thing is your mentor is here to be able to see and witness kind of like a little bit of his information. It's like a, a father or a coach, like watching their players play and them winning. And that's a great, great feeling when they do something so well. And you did a great job sharing your story. And for being a new public speaker, I really saw you put the effort in when you tried to add some vocal inflection. And I think that's really, really great because it does allow the audience to kind of be a part of your speech a little bit more and know when we need to be excited or know when you're a little sad. So you did a really good job with that. And I think one thing about, you know, um, one thing about this speech in general, when people give it, it's, it has a similar format. And for me, that kind of bothers me a little bit because it's all, it's, it's really predictable in the sense of this before I was a, you know, before I had a mentor, now I have a mentor now that, my mentors giving me tools. And I think with your ability and your background in a, as a music major, when you keep on doing more future speeches, you get more comfortable. I would rather you show us a little bit about who you are within your speech, not just kind of tell us, but like you go off script a little bit, ad lib and play your own music, and so to speak. And with your title, the title from wheat, now I'm a bun, eventually a burger. When I first read this and you sent me your evaluation form, I got really intrigued and I'm like, hmm, this is really interesting. But for me, I did have a tough time kind of following that theme a little bit because I did hear a little bit of where you referenced it, but throughout the whole speech, I, I didn't really hear the, the main message. So if you're gonna use a title like that long and kind of interesting, I would like to hear, I think more clearly and what your message is and how it's gonna tie in the beginning of your speech. And that would be really awesome. So again, great job today. And remember, add a little bit more of that, a little bit of who you are, add a little bit more of that emotion, when you get more and more comfortable. Really try to take your own sheet of music again. Don't always go with the same script as from the past, be unique. And again, when you have a title, try to maybe incorporate it, the, me the main message in the beginning so we can follow that story. But again, I do now see what makes you a burger now. So thank you, Toastmaster Aaron, and back to you, Mr. G. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Ben, for the evaluation. It is very insightful. Now the next uh, evaluation will be from PTM Augustinus Vijaya will evaluate Toastmaster Pink. The floor is yours. Thank you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Lutfi. First of all, congratulations, 
Toastmaster Ping for finishing the strategic relation pathways and doing the 11-11-11 challenge. Well done. Now, whenever I heard a project that have a 10 to 12 minute time allocation, I was always wondering, how will the speaker maintain the audience attention? And Toastmaster Ping did very well with maintaining my attention. He did these two things. First, the majority of his speech contained storytelling. That is the best way to keep me intrigued. For example, for the starter, he is telling us the story about the background of doing the 11-11-11 project, the challenge. And the second thing that Toastmaster Ping did very well is to maintain the interaction with the audience by asking questions. This is the technique that we learned from Toastmaster Jai from yesterday's workshop about from speaker to trainer. Toastmaster Ping asked several thought provoking questions throughout the speech. Well done with maintaining the audience attention, Toastmaster Ping. And now for the room of improvement. I have two things that I believe can improve the quality of your speech. The first one is how you structure your speech. When I heard your speech, I felt as if you are telling me a random story about your journey in doing these pathways. This is how I propose to structure your speech even better. Perhaps you can start with telling us why you choose strategic relationship. I remember you told me that you choose this particular pathways to do the 11-11-11 challenge. What is the best way to do the 11-11-11 pathways than doing this strategic relationship pathways? And then you can limit to three major benefit, major growth that you felt during doing this pathways. Limit to three, for example, you improve your networking, perhaps you can tell us about you become more flexible with your agenda and you improve your emotional cohesion, for example. And you can elaborate more on those three topics. That, that, is, that is the first feedback. And the second one, when I heard that you talk about how you felt when you are given a lap offer of speech slot, perhaps you can twist the negativity experience to positive experience. As a speaker, as a trainer who speak in front of a lot of people, there is a high chances that some of the audience done that kind of mistake in the past, right? So you can twist the negative experience perhaps by saying, I'm sure the ex-co didn't mean it when he, he said about the lack of a speech slot, but I learned that I need to select my words carefully so that others do not feel the way I feel about lack of a. So overall, good job with maintaining the audience attention with storytelling and asking questions. And to improve, you can structure your speech better and twist the negative experience into a positive experience. Once again, congratulations for finishing your pathways. Looking forward for you to finish another pathways. Thank you. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you very much, Titian Agustinus, for such insight, insightful evaluation. And last but not least, we're going to hear the last evaluation from TMJ Narayan, to, who will evaluate the TM Natalie. The floor is yours. Toastmasters guest and speaker Natalie. Natalie, your speech came as a breath of fresh air. Well, why do I say that? Because I've heard so many Toastmasters deliver the same project speech. And to use your own words, it ends up being a laundry list of predictable sequential project speeches. Yours 
was not. You not only took the stairs, you took the path less trodden. Now, let me give you my observations on how you could elevate your speech to the next level. Firstly, what I like about your speech. Well, I like the opening because you engage with us by asking, which would you do when given a choice between the stairs and the uh, elevator? What would you take? And you mentioned to us, you would take the elevator uh, because it took you where you wanted to go fast. And of course it was easy, less hassles. The second thing I liked about your speech was the metaphor of using the stairs as an example of sequential growth in your life step by step, one step at a time higher. Not only did I think it was a great comparison for growth, it was very visual, which I absolutely loved because I was visualizing a stair in my head. And as you were speaking, I was going up it one step at a time following your story. The third thing I liked, of course, was the fact that you told us how in the, in the process of reflecting on your path, you told us how outside of Toastmasters, you adapted and you learned what you did in your presentation mastery pass over the past one and a half years, either in an online engagement with that friend of yours, or it was, I should, that I think was an educational program or a emceeing for an engagement. And all the lessons you learned from the uh, district, uh, you know, the programs that you attended, we taught you to engage with the audience. Overall, I thought it was uh, very interesting. And as I said, a very refreshing take on reflecting mm -hmm. on your path. Now, what could you do to elevate this to the next level? Natalie, three, three things. Number one, prepare. I know you as a far better speaker than I heard you today, Natalie. And let me tell you, you rather innocently told us that this is going to be like a table topic and you'll do it spontaneously, but it showed. I think you definitely need to have something scripted so that it comes out far smoother and flows easier from you, which you're capable of. I thought there was a lack of preparation. Hello. Right. Number two, I thought you could have alluded to some of the projects in brief to say, oh, the uh, how to be a better communicator taught me how to engage with the audience. Or storytelling taught me how to structure my speech just to reflect on certain projects in the spot. And thirdly, I thought the ending was confusing when you said, ladies and gentlemen, turn your obstacles into opportunities by taking one step forward at a time. Not only it's not forward, it's higher, one step higher. Having said that, Continue to craft speeches unique to your style, right. with great opening and great ending. Just pay attention to practice, and I will climb and take the stairs however high to hear your next speech. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you very much, GM Jainarayan. So that concludes our three evaluation for today. So is all the evaluators of uh, time is uh, okay? DTM Seni. Yeah, Mr. GE. Available? Yeah, okay. So here's okay. my report for the evaluator one, two, and three. Eligible, so right? I think, but I think for the evaluator, his time is four minutes something. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, DTM Agustinus is not available for the before the time. All right. So it's okay. only first evaluator and the third evaluator are eligible to be voted as the favorite one. Okay, you, thank Mr. you very G. much, Dave Sene. Okay, so that thanks to the evaluation. Back to Tom. Thank you, GE Toastmaster Luffy Akbar Jasli for leading the evaluation session. Fellow Toastmaster and guests, now we have the voting session. Please select the best prepared speakers, best table topic speaker, and best evaluator from the form given to you. Thank you so much. The, I will share the form in the chat box. Take your time and may carry on to the evaluation session. Okay, so let's check in the chat box and select for the best prepared speaker, best evaluator, and also best table topic.
we could probably go to the next. We can go on. Thank you, Tam Pipit. My fellow Toastmaster and distinguished guests, let's continue this meeting. I will call upon again our GE Toastmaster Lucy Atpa Jesuli to take over from here for the evaluation from the grammarian, accounter, and yourself as GE. My fellow Toastmaster and guests, please welcome Toastmaster Lutfi. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster Fifi, for the opportunity. Uh, we will start with the general evaluation of the day with the AH counter. And the one who's going to give the report is Toastmaster Makren Radika. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I would like to share my screen. Okay, everyone, have you watched my screen? In front of you? Cool. Yes. Yes, visible. And I would like to inform you that I already tally all the lexicals and non lexicals. And I would like to give a brief of reports. And for the lexicals, those two mentions most are so and 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 there or then. So the, the total combine of the lexical is for the nines and the king. Of who meets most is Aaron. And for the non lexicals, it's always, ah, it's always the maximum users of all the speakers. It is counted 42. Okay, so that's why it's called a counter, I think. And then the to total of non lexical, the queen is Natalie. In this part, I think that I agree with Jay that maybe Natalie little bit need for kind of rehearse because usually Natalie make less like Vivi Amelia Wati. Okay, for the total lexical or no lexicals, all of them are 108 made by this meeting only. So I would like to give reports is by one. Vivi made two, Luthi made 10, and then Sani made four, PP3, sorry, cannot count myself. Dian mid 12, Ben mid 7, Agustinus mid 9, J about 5, Aaron about 18. And Aaron is the king of total lexical and non lexicals made in this today meeting. And then Ping mid 11, Natalie herself mid 15, number two in a row. Natalie and Seifel made four, Bonaventure made two, Charm made one, Bobby just one. And this is all the report that I give to you guys. You can better next time. And I would like to ensure that this is as best as I can do. And I give the control back to my man of steel G. Time is yours. And I'm stop sharing. Yeah, thank you very much, Toastmaster Marendra, for such a thorough and exact count on the uh, counting. Now, the next will be Grammarian Pipit, who will deliver us with her report. Thank you. The floor is yours. Yes, I managed to arrive home just in time. Okay, and this is what I wrote when I was in the car. Uh, the Some expressions that I think need some improvement and I think let's try to improve this together. Thank you for all the role takers. So this is very Indonesian uh, because we use for untuk para pemegang peran, right? So we can we can just say thank you all, uh, thank you role takers. We don't we don't need for in this uh, sentence, right? And we always have back and forth between past tense and present tense in the same sentence. And sometimes in the same situations, we tend to use mixed with past tense and present tense. And we try to, we need to be more consistent about this one. If we talk about the past, then we, let's keep it in past sentence only and things like that. And then when you ask to speak, to speak in public, when you were asked to speak in public, he was here watching me. Uh, I think this is supposed to be present tense. So he is here watching me. He shouldn't use a formal way. Uh, it should not use a formal way. It shouldn't be used in a formal way, I think. It shouldn't be used, uh, I don't know. I, was, I wasn't sure 
what was the uh, what is it called? What was the actual? What was the intention of the speaker when he said this? I I, I shouldn't use a formal way, but maybe I I'm not sure. So need to be more clear in how to arrange the words in the sentence. Like I'm telling a story with my best friend. Like I'm sharing a story with my best friends. Yeah, but this was supposed to be a supposition. So like I was telling a story, like I was sharing a story with my best friend. When I was not joined to the Toastmasters, first of all, we don't have to put the before Toastmasters. It's very uncommon to, to, to say the Toastmasters unless it's the Toastmasters something else, like the Toastmasters meeting that I joined yesterday, something like that, right? So when I hadn't joined Toastmasters yet, when I was not a member of Toastmasters yet, it's probably the better way to say it. That a huge advantage to me. That was a huge advantage advantage for me. There are so many other things that I learned. Now, this is also very Indonesian. That in Bahasa is yang, right? There are so many other things yang I learned, right? That's why we put that. Actually, it's redundant. When you completely erase that, it's still understandable and actually preferable. Like, just say there are so many other things I learned. Beside this, for some correct, and then I was in a conundrum. Conundrum is actually a question, so I had a conundrum about what I wanted to do with my life, something like that. So you cannot say you are in a conundrum. My friend new venture, my friend's new venture, it led into another one. It led to another one. There are two sides of the coin. There are two sides of a coin. What came in as a discussion among friends. What started as a discussion among friends? When I heard your story, now in Bahasa, we have hear and listen to, and it's translated as the same in Bahasa, which is mendengar, right? But in English, hear and listen to have two different implications. So here, you just hear without any um, intention, like you just hear it on the fly or without, sometimes accidentally. But when you listen to something, that means you listen to it on purpose. So when I listen to your story, better it's better way to say it than when I heard your story. And then uh, some expressions that I really like here, among others, right? Sorry if I couldn't produce all of them. We don't speak like we were writing an essay. Yes, of course, we don't speak like we were writing an essay, right? Writing an essay is really boring. That's why this is, uh, you know, we're not public writers, but we are private speakers, <laughs> right? And then, will you take the ele elevator or the stairs? That's the question, ladies and gentlemen. Will you take the elevator or the, sta or the stairs? If I catch Natalie, take the elevator, I will let you know, right? Same scenario, different scenery. I like this expression too, because when we try to choose a certain path and then we feel like, oh, this doesn't sound original, but it's okay, just take that path anyway, because you probably, can see different scenery, although you want to follow the same scenario. There are no elevators to success. There are only stairs to success. And yes, and there are only stairs to heaven too. There are no elevators to heaven as far as I'm concerned, right? See, she is single, mingle, and available. This was in the chat box, but I really like it. And you know, if you, you know who you are, but this was reverse to you. And yes, single, mingle, and available. 30 thriving and precious. Right, and that is the report from the Grammarian today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster PT and Pipit for the if, uh, for the report on the Grammarian. Now, as I would like to conclude today's meeting with my own evaluation on overall meetings. First of all, I would like to thank the Toastmaster of the meeting, Toastmaster Fifi, for such a smooth and on schedule. Uh, meeting because we are supposed to finish at 7 45 so I have like four minutes to deliver my AG evaluation right so um, okay first of all I'd like to thank all the speakers for uh, this is level five uh, prepared speech so it's quite long speech right 10 to 12 minutes but thank god all the speakers have done their best to make that 10 to 12 minutes uh, not so boring Okay, but and then uh, I will also thank the evaluators for to Toastmaster Ben and then DTM Agustinus and also TM Jai for giving such 
insightful and also a very good evaluation to uh, to make their speeches better for the next time. Now, as for the role takers, I would like to thank our timer, Seni, for giving us uh, a very good timing because she gives pictures and also she also write down the timing on the chat box, which is very good. And then uh, now for the improvement, I would like to suggest to Smarter Seni to, to make a more obvious color for the yellow. This is like white and yellow. So it's like, I would suggest that you pick a color. This is really yellow for the next time. Okay, thank you. And then for the uh, counter, Toastmaster Marendra, very good job using the Alicia Curtis uh, table, Excel, right? It's like if it's me, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not really good at listening. So very good job, uh, Toastmaster Marendra. And then Toastmaster Ipit for Ask Grammarian. Thank you very much for giving us a very thorough uh, report on the grammar that we made, uh, the, uh, the mistakes on the grammar that we made during this, uh, during this meeting. So hopefully after the report, we will not make the same mistake again. So that is my general elevation for today. Thank you very much for all the participants. Then hope to see you again on the next meeting. Thank you very much. Back to the Thank you, GE Luffy and Tip. This is clear and meaningful feedback. We will use this feedback for the improvement on the next meeting. Now let us continue with the announcement of the best prepared speaker best table topic speaker and best evaluator. Can TM Pipit share? Okay, uh, can we go to the closing first because I'm trying to prepare this. Oh, thank you. Okay. Mm. Then um, at this moment, we already finished our program today. Now I would like to hand over the stage to our club president, Natalie Cahyadi. Thank you everyone for your support. Back to you, Natalie. Thank you, Toastmaster Fifi. Great job. So this is Fifi's first time in Toastmastering uh, in Bineka. So can we give her another round of applause? Thank you. Thank you, Fifi. Okay. So while waiting for, oh my gosh, I said another so, Rendra, you got me. <laughs> while waiting for Pipit to prepare the certificate, I would like to ask guest comment. Uh, first stop is from Bobby. So, Bobby, what do you think about our club meeting? Do you enjoy it? Will you come back again? Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you are, you got guys uh, funnier in the chat room than in your physical gesture. Your physical gesture, like, so serious. But in the chat room, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> So it's different personality between the chat and what it's looking the face. <laughs> but yes, I enjoy the the event. The, also the looking at the uh, speech. I it's been very long uh, since I joined Toastmaster before. So I just browsed the Toastmaster website. It's changed a lot. <laughs> I don't recognize anymore how to navigate. So learning again, uh, my mentor will be TMVV, <laughs> the madam. <laughs> thank you, that's all. Thank you, uh, thank you, Bobby. We hope you come back and hopefully join as a member. Awesome. So next is, let me see, let me see. Visiting Toastmaster um, Saiful from Malaysia Online. Thank you, Madam President. Hi, I'm Saiful. I'm from Malaysia Online. I'm here based on the suggestion of DTM Harlina. She said, uh, Beneka is one of the best club if you want to join venture or working together because both of you, both of us, Malaysia Online and Beneka Online is online club. So much easier to work together on that part. And on top of that, this is a very good meeting. And for me, I enjoy it very much. 
Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Saiful. So guys, we got um, an offer to do a joint meeting. I leave it to all of the EXCO and the club members. We can talk about it after tonight's meeting. Next is Toastmaster Aaron, uh, because this is your first time coming to Bineka, right? Uh, so thank you for letting me deliver my speech in Benica online. Uh, uh, first of all, I feel enjoyed and, and hello. Yes, we uh, can okay. hear you. Okay. Uh, and I would like to visit in the next meeting looking forward to see more of the Benica online together that's all thanks back to you president thank you thank you aaron we're happy to have you here today and can i hear also from jai and sharm well um, i'm going to answer your second question first which was will you come back to this meeting our next meeting and the answer is yes now, what did I uh, really enjoy about your meeting? Well, as some of you heard before you started, I just celebrated my 59th birthday a few days ago, but your meeting today and its theme took me right back to my childhood days. So I thought it was very enjoyable. So as I was listening to all the table topics and the speakers, I was reflecting uh, in part on my old childhood. And I thought it was going down memory lane thanks to your meeting right? So many things I may have forgotten. Um, so I liked the meeting. Uh, I enjoyed the theme. Um, overall, uh, I thought that it was pretty entertaining and I will definitely be back. Thank you for having us today. Thank you, Jai. Can we hear from your heart and your eyes, Sharm, as well? It was not my idea to call myself heart and eyes of Jay, okay? <laughs> clear on that. Yes, what did I like? Okay, what, first thing, I, I have to agree with Bobby. And that's what I told Jay as well. Why are they so serious? <laughs> and then I saw, as, as he did, I saw the chat was, oh, that's where they have their fun. So I would invite all of you to just loosen up and have fun during the meetings. You know, don't take Toastmasters so seriously. <laughs> it's not, yes, in some ways you have to take it seriously. There is the point of integrity to your roles and stuff like that. But uh, Toastmasters, just, just have fun. Because when you have fun, you will enjoy your roles. You will enjoy your projects. And, uh, and I will feel better next time when I come and enjoy more. Uh -huh. So I did enjoy today and love meeting all of you. All the best to your club. Thank you, Sharm. Thank you. You know, sometimes we are too focused on typing. We forgot to control our expression. I think that's what came out. <laughs> all right. Uh, who, oh, Augustinus, yes, last but not least. Thank you, President Natalie. First of all, thank you very much, everyone, for having me here. Thank you very much for inviting me here. And I think I agree with this thing is Toastmaster Harlina Indra, who said that Bineka is one of the best clubs. Uh, I remember that this club was chartered during my term as club growth director last term. I think I, I visit this very, the very first club meeting of this club. Correct. And yeah, yeah, I visited. And <clears throat> I get to know many high energy members like Natalie, Pippi, Ping, Ben Whitaker. And this is the club where I believe everyone can learn and improve all the members or the visiting guests will learn and improve in this club so i hope this club will always continues to to be the light for everyone's improvement in those masters thank you for having me here thank you agus our handsome korean opa oh i'll i will not miss you Toastmaster bonaventure because you've been coming here, I think, two or three times. So as a repeated guest. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Yes, I, I really enjoy the meeting. Always when I come over to Benica, there's always something new in the meeting. Not only the friendly expressions or the welcoming uh, gestures that everybody is showing onto 
me, but the somehow when I come to Benica, the my standard of English somehow goes a little bit up, and I become more conscious on what to say, and I try to minimize my um ah uh, when I come here. So this is the only one or two clubs that I go to that allow that gets me that. So thank you. I I love it, and I'm glad uh, my my old Aaron uh, comes here and deliver his speech here because from here onwards, he's going to fly. I believe so. With that, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Bonaventure. He is very caring. He's even here to watch over his club members. Okay, I think, Pipit, are you ready to do the search? Yes, I am. All right, awesome. All right, so everyone ready? Prepare your drum roll. Yeah, always ready. So I'm sharing screen and oh, sorry, <laughs> I think it shows already. Right. <laughs> Prepared speaker is. Yeah. Okay, can someone please spotlight Natalie and I can take photo? Uh, yes, that's what I've been doing this whole meeting, spotlighting <laughs> myself and others. Let me put uh, remove spotlight. Oh, by the way, Sharm, maybe that's one of the reason why I look a little bit tense. Too many things to multitask. Okay, Pipet. Yeah. Right. So, oh, sorry, Natalie. I think you should take your own photo. Sorry. Uh, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. One more job. What is one more job when you have 10 already, right? Yes. One, two, three. Awesome. Thanks. Nice. Right. Awesome as well. Now let's go to the best at the evaluator. Next one. Best evaluator is Jai. Yes. Please take photo. Respond like Jai, please. Congrats, Jai. Congrats, Natalie. Thank you. Okay. There's a little bit of um uh, spelling mistake, but we will correct it for you. So oh, yes, yes, yes. smile. So Three, two, one. Okay, that, what is the correct mis, uh, spelling? Uh, J -A -I. We, yes. J what? J A I. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, we will correct it for you. That's correct. Next one. Okay. okay. Oh, here, here. All right. Sorry. Oh, here. Okay, best table topic. Is... Oh, this is not a coincidence. Amazing. Trump. Also, yeah. it, there's a spelling mistake. <laughs> For sure, because so oh, I just arrived here. Time. What is it? It's not fully functioning. Let's take photo. Well, at least you don't leave behind one and you, you made a mistake on both. Anyway. Join again next week, you take them all. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop it, Sharm, for you. Okay, Sharm. Okay. In three, two, one. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We also have several first timers, but I will. Uh, I like to apologize, but I will just mention it. And this is the first time for PV to be Toastmaster of the meeting. So, Super. Good job. Baby. Congrats. And PV. then I think first time for Lufti as well to be the GE. Ooh. Welcome, G. Well done. And I don't know whether it's me or Natalie who is announcing about Sani. Uh, also, Dian Fifi. Oh, Dian Fifi. Dian Fifi, are you there? Okay. Also, first time for Dian Fifi to be the table topic master. Also, well done. She prepared 12 questions. There's no such thing as over question in Toastmasters. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And then I'll give the control back to Natalie. Thank you, Pipit spotlight myself great thank you and uh, before we officially close tonight's meeting i will also like to welcome seni uh, to bineka online toastmasters club seni has been a member of toastmasters for several years but she's a transfer member from magical bali to bineka online toastmasters club so please club member give her official welcome welcome seni welcome my Yay, thank you, everyone. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you. Celebrate. Celebrate. So, Sandy, yeah. you, will, you will get uh, 30 seconds of spotlight. Karaoke, please. Karaoke, please. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you very much for the warm welcome, Binika Online Toastmasters Club. Yeah, I I guess I am happy to be accepted. <laughs> and I need inspiration and motivation here. Hopefully you guys can fit me here. <laughs> thank you for being in my Sunday agenda, Bineka. Thank you. Back to you, President Natalie. Thank you, Sani. And we're so lucky and so happy to have you in our club because you're an experienced Toastmasters and always willing to take on any roles to help the club grow. So thank you. We're happy to have you. Okay, so that's it for our club uh, this week. Uh, next meeting is on the next two weeks on the 17th of October. And we will have a special meeting on the 31st of October. It is not a club meeting. Relax, guys. Just like Sharm said, enjoy it. So on the 31st of October, we will have like a social meeting. It will be games, karaoke, and whatever you want to do except club meeting. So no speeches, nothing. Just do fun things, right? So if you're interested in being a game master or doing some things, contact Ben or Fifi or myself. We can allocate roles for you and that's it. So 17 club meeting and then 31st Halloween theme social meeting. All right, for with this, Binika Online Toastmaster Club meeting is officially closed. Thank you everyone for coming and have a great week. Two minutes early, we're done. That's okay, really thank you. But I would like to ask Fifi, Dian Fifi, and Lufti to stay back so we can.